Hello, hello, happy Monday, and welcome to Making Waves with Moana Adams. I'm your host, Moana, a teenage girl with a lot to say and a lot more to learn. And today we're talking about living crunchy and clean living with Ava. Ava Hi. is going to give us a rundown of who she is, what she does, all the things. Hi, so my name's Ava. I'm a 16 year old content creator from Massachusetts. Um, I am homeschooled, so I have a lot of free time, which is why I started my Instagram account. It's basically centered around like clean and holistic living and how to like live healthily and feel your best. Uh, my account focuses on sourdough, homeschool, like healthy swaps, and more. It's basically everything like crunchy. I call myself crunchy teen because I'm like a crunchy mom without kids. I love that. I always say that my family is like we're not the most crunchy family, but we're definitely a little crunchy. And mm-hmm. I love your account. Of course, fellow homeschooler. Yes, I love that. So before we get into today's episode, we always start with a current obsession. And this is just something about or in your life that you're currently loving. And this week, mine is photo dumps. I love doing my photo dumps on Instagram. And I've been doing them way more often and way more casually recently. And that's really just helped me fall in love with posting on my feed again and just get more comfortable posting my like genuine life and posting casually I actually love photo dump so that's so funny you said that yeah I would say my obsession is currently sourdough I literally love making sourdough I love like waking up in the morning and having like a loaf able to shape so it's like so fun to play with the dough it feels like slime but like adult older version (laughs) adult slime yes literally and then we do high tide which is like a book podcast it could be a youtuber ted talk just something motivational and self-help related that listeners can go to for education motivation inspiration Mm -hmm. and this week mine is girls that invest by simran Carr. i just started this book I want to say the beginning of this week, and I absolutely love it. It's definitely, honestly, I feel like it's a book for anyone. Obviously, it's an investment book, but it is so well written and so simple. It makes everything so easy to understand. And she also has a podcast and everything, and it's a full community that goes along with the book. And so I'm just really loving learning from her. After, is that a book or an audio book? She has the book and the podcast and an Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to check that out. My current high tide is I love to listen to the Spillover podcast. One of my followers actually recommended it to me. And it's hosted by Alex Clark. She's like amazing. She's a great host. And it has so many like holistic, crunchy resources and information. They have a bunch of like cool guests. So it's super fun. I listen to it on my walks. I love that. I love a good podcast moment that has like strong value and resources that's something Mm -hmm. that I definitely really try to like put into my episodes is like real genuine like value and like actionable things that listeners can use so Mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna have to check her out yes you have to it's so good so let's get into the episode and we're gonna start off with just talking about clean living and gut health so tell us what sparked your passion for clean living all right so it's kind of like a long story But my whole life, I basically ate like a normal kid, acted like a normal kid. I went to McDonald's with my cousins when I was younger. I used to love Bath and Body Works. I said that I wanted to work there. So it was basically like just the standard American. But like all that, I was just like a normal kid until I turned 13. And out of nowhere, I got severe digestive issues. Like I'd be up at night, like crying. My stomach hurt so bad. I was constantly nauseous. I had headaches, just like awful, awful like symptoms. And it took a while to figure out what it was, but it turned out that I had these crazy food intolerances. I had developed intolerances to gluten, dairy, and egg out of nowhere. Um, so I went to a bunch of doctors. I cut out the into- like the foods I was intolerant to, such as gluten and dairy. And I my symptoms like sort of resolved, but like I would still experience stomach aches a few times a week. It was just uncomfortable. I'm like, I didn't, I was sick of feeling sick, but doctors continued to tell me that 
it was just IBS and I was going to have to like manage my symptoms and learn like what caused the flare ups. So I was just kind of sick of this and like I wanted to be able to live my life again and actually feel good. So like I was feeling better, but I wanted to feel my best. So I was like a strict, I was on a strict gluten-free diet and dairy-free. I reintroduced eggs, but I was strictly gluten and dairy-free. So I had to check ingredient labels. Like I literally had to, to make sure it was gluten-free. And I started seeing like all of the ingredients that they were putting in our foods. And it just was like shocking to me because I never had thought of that or looked at the ingredients. And it's just like, why are they adding like food dye to something that's like naturally brown, like chocolate or something? And it's just like so crazy. So I started doing tons of research on like gut microbiome and like IBS and all these issues. Um, I got on social media and I saw like a bunch of influencers and stuff posting about it because I feel like it's like a lot of it has been like coming to light the past couple of years with like IBS, candida, like all these things. Um, so I saw these things and I was like, maybe I can manage my symptoms and like heal these intolerances. So I didn't completely like understand what was wrong with me specifically. Like I knew that my gut microbiome was off and like for that reason I was having crazy symptoms and developing food intolerances. And like I didn't want it to get worse. I didn't want to get like food intolerances to everything or like environmental issues, stuff like that. Like so I started making healthier choices and I like things I did things that would positively impact my gut microbiome. And I continued to cut out gluten and dairy because, like, at that time, my gut and, like, my intestines and everything couldn't handle it. So little by little, my symptoms started resolving. I, like, started incorporating daily things like probiotics and stuff that were making me feel better. I started going to a chiropractor. Believe it or not, that actually, like, is connected. (laughs) I feel like a lot of people don't realize that. But Eventually, I, so this past year, like a few months ago, I reintroduced sourdough. So it's basically, it's bread, obviously, it's made out of flour, but it's fermented. So like, um, the gluten index is like lower. So you most people can tolerate it. So I introduced that. And that's like when my symptoms like it was like a 360, like, or 180. (laughs) I was able to like, eat gluten again, I had like no symptoms. And it was just like amazing. Like I truly like feel like when I reincorporated sourdough, it was like my gut like was fully like restored and healed because I feel like it's super healing because it has prebiotics and probiotics. And like studies show that completely cutting out gluten can be bad for your liver, which is super interesting. But I also incorporated like high quality dairy, like grass fed butter. And I have just like been amazing ever since. I rarely have stomach aches like headaches are completely gone and it's just amazing. So like, I really want to share that with people because it's my passion and I'm so interested in it. So I like just enrolled in a gut health course that I'm super excited about so I can like completely like understand all this. Wow. That's, that's really crazy. I, I mean, that's amazing. I love that you didn't just listen to what the doctors say. You knew that there was something more that needed to be done and that like you could, make a difference in your life and if you keep doing your own research you can solve your own issues and work towards living healthier my family my dad and my sister are both celiac so gluten-free is a big thing in our house um of course we're always and we're always reading food labels in our house so i definitely relate to that so Mm -hmm. your family has not always been into living clean and crunchy no, not at all. So in so I'm the oldest of six kids, and I would say I'm definitely the crunchiest. Some of my siblings are the opposite of me, and they, like, completely hate all the healthy choices, and they don't like it, and they just want to be, like, a normal kid, um, which is fine. Like, they're little. But we have not always been this crunchy. Like I said before, like, I would go to McDonald's. We like basically bought like normal things like I'd have goldfish and stuff we didn't always have like the sugary cereals like lucky charms or everything but we did buy products with like seed oils natural flavors and stuff like that um and we always used like conventional like cleaning products bathing products like dental products stuff like that but like I'm not blaming my parents for that or anything because like we really didn't know better and I feel like recently like a lot of people have been like 
their eyes have been opened to all this. And back then, it wasn't that long ago, but it was not as like popular to be living like a clean lifestyle, if that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely think that it's been very normalized, especially in the US to just whatever's in the grocery store is fine. Like it's approved. So, you know, it can't be that bad. But when you really look into the ingredients that are in the products that we're using, it can actually blow your mind. And I love that, like, especially with social media now, it's really coming to light. Exactly. And it's like, I feel like most people like don't realize like that the ingredients in food, like they're actually harming people. And like, I feel like most people think that like, oh, the government wouldn't allow it if it's like not safe to eat. Or like I ate like goldfish when I was younger and I'm fine. But, like, the ingredients right. change so much and, like, they get so much worse throughout the years. Right. How do you approach incorporating clean living into your everyday life beyond just switching products and skincare and household products? Yeah, so I would say just, like, slowly incorporating it um, was great because, like, it's super important to not get stressed out about it because, like, oftentimes the stress can be like worse for you and worse for your gut than like act than these products are so I always like to like say I'm swapping out like say I don't want to eat like seed oil chips anymore if I have like a bag at my house like I'll just like finish it off and then once I finish it I either won't buy like chips anymore which I still do I just get seed oil or I get a seed oil free option So I do that with everything. So like with like my shampoo and conditioner, I used to use native because I thought that was better, but that has fragrance in it. So I try to avoid that. So once I ran out of my bottles, like I just replaced it with like a cleaner option. So I just kind of do it super slowly because it's not really sustainable or like attainable in today's economy to just like throw everything away and like start from scratch. So I would say it's like super important to just do what you can. Like I even swapped like my clothes out for like, 100% organic cotton or anything so like the same goes for like any category of products just like take your time and like each like positive step is like a positive impact on your health I love that I think that it's really important to kind of like balance it out and give yourself grace when making a huge lifestyle switch exactly What are some of the challenges or setbacks that you've encountered throughout this journey of living a more clean lifestyle and how did you overcome them? Okay, I would say it's like, it's your lifestyle. So like, you basically like, well, for me, it's like I have control over it. So most of like, there there have not been too many setbacks because like I can just like adjust my lifestyle accordingly. But one of the big things was, I'm homeschooled now, but last year I um, was at my, like, public high school. And I would say it's, like, super hard to eat healthy. Um, Or, like, I thought it was super hard. It's not as hard as I thought it was. But to, like, have a healthy, like, packable lunch, I would, like, bring, like, a lot of packaged and processed foods just because, like, I didn't have time to, like, make a, like, elaborate lunch or anything or eat an elaborate breakfast before school in the morning. So I feel like that was, like, tough because, like, I really did not have time to, like, make this, like, healthy, like, meal with, like, a protein, a fat, and stuff like that. But I just – it's, like, one of those things. Like, you do what you can, and, like, if you can't pack, like, a real whole foods lunch, like, just bring some snacks with, like, good ingredients or something. That's something that I did not do. (laughs) Right. Yeah, I definitely think it's easy to do what's convenient, especially because so many processed foods and products are easy and accessible and definitely save a lot of time. And so it can make it hard for people who are really busy and on the go to incorporate more whole foods into their diet. Exactly. And I feel like it's great because like now a lot of products and snacks and stuff or even like frozen foods, they're coming out with ones with better ingredients. So it's getting a lot easier to like achieve your goals of eating whole foods and everything. Right. How do you navigate? Because you said you were in public school before. How do you navigate social situations and like peer pressure that may conflict with your clean living? And especially as a teen, I feel like there's so much 
there's so much pressure to, you know, just do things casually, especially when you're with friends. Do you encounter anything where the people around you aren't as supportive? This is a great question because I do feel like everyone's trying to fit in these days. And obviously, like, this lifestyle is not really, like, the norm. Um, But I just, like, I'm my own person. Like, I control my own lifestyle. And I know, like, many, many people are judging my choices, um, like, from strangers to even friends. But I just, like, that's okay. Like, everyone has their own opinions. I just, like, kind of live my life. But when I'm, like, out with friends and everything, like, I will, like, get eat whatever I want. Like, I'll, if we're at a restaurant, I'll get the burger with, like, a bun or, like, whatever. Um, But I just feel like it's sad that, like, eating a healthy, like, diet and, like, having a clean lifestyle isn't the norm in our country. I feel like we've gone, like, really far down the tubes that eating the real food, like, that God created and provided for us isn't like what everyone does like we're like used to eating fake food or like dousing yourself in perfume every single day and skipping breakfast every morning it's just like i don't know it's sad that that's like how everyone lives their lives and like they just don't know any better right i definitely think there's not and of course now i think definitely with social media there's more but there's not as much education on you know the actual ingredients and things that are in our foods do you feel like it's easy to just it's easier to just eat what everyone else is eating and use what everyone else is eating when you're around people or for you is it more like I'm doing what's best for myself and you can do what's best for yourself yeah so it really like depends on the day and what I'm feeling because I like I don't really restrict myself at all It's just that I like when you feel good, like after eating these foods, like these whole foods, high protein, all that stuff, like you crave them. Like I'm not craving like chips with seed oils or anything. But when I am with my friends and like having fun, like I'm I'm not the person to get like the unhealthiest choice on the menu just because like I don't really like it. Like most of the time I will get a salad or something um, with like grilled chicken. But I feel like I am like, I am my own person. Like, I'm not going to be swayed into, like, eating, like, a Starburst or something. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So, of course, you started working on your gut health, um, like you shared earlier. What would you do if you had to start over and it was back to the beginning? Or what would you tell someone who's just getting into learning about their gut health and wants to start living a cleaner lifestyle? Yeah, okay. So, I would say, like, the first thing to do is, like, just do research about your symptoms. Like, try to figure out the root cause. I feel like that's a big thing these days, too, trying to find the root cause. Because it's true, like, these things are just symptoms, and your body's trying to tell you, like, what it is that, like, is stressing it out. So I would say try to figure out the general issue. And then a super, like, big impact that is super great and pretty easy is to focus on what you're eating. Like, it's good to, like, have a lot of protein because that's, like, great for your gut and your hormones and everything. Um, eat a lot of fiber that's super beneficial to your gut. Try to focus on fermented foods, like incorporating that, like sauerkraut, um, or like you can have sourdough, whatever. Um, and another easy thing to do is start taking a good high quality probiotic. Um, this like, it doesn't work for everyone, but it's good for a lot of people. I definitely think that, especially now, I feel like there are more products that are processed, but they're they're more focused on gut health. The thing that comes to mind for me is always poppy. Oh, yes. I love me a good poppy. So I think that brands like that are doing a really great job educating. Even on like the poppy can, it shows like, and it talks about prebiotics and probiotics and things like that and gut health. Exactly. Yeah, so just like incorporating like better for you options. Like it doesn't have to be the perfect, most expensive option. Just things that like you feel good after eating. And you know that, like, they're making, a, like, a nice little impact on your gut health. You mentioned sourdough. Could you share, I know that you're selling sourdough starters. Could you share, like, how did you really get into sourdough and, like, what makes it something that you're so passionate about? Yeah, so that's a great question. I was just seeing it everywhere, like, 
everyone was making sourdough. It was like all the rage because I feel like in stores, like a lot of the ingredients in bread are super processed or they're enriched with vitamins and stuff. So a lot of people just started making their bread from scratch and sourdough is super beneficial. So I saw this and I was like, oh, I'm gluten-free. Like I should try this. So first I tried making a gluten-free sourdough starter. You can do that. You just use like gluten-free flour. Um, and I, I killed it. It got all moldy. But so then I was like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to do like the real gluten sourdough. And I did it and I tolerated it fine. And like I just like fell in love with like making it. It's super relaxing and it like helps you to slow down a little. And I've always loved baking. So it's like really much my cup of tea. And it's just so relaxing in the morning when you can come. Like I get out of bed, go downstairs and I can shape my sourdough. I can bake it. It's so relaxing and it like it's a great hobby instead of being on your phone or something. And I feel so good eating it and my gut health has like drastically improved. What are some other recipes other than sourdough? Like, what are your go-to meals that you just love and are great for people who are looking for more clean recipes? So I love, like, since I'm homeschooled, I can make whatever I want at home. And I love to have, like, some fried eggs with sourdough and, like, avocado for lunch. It's good to balance your meals with, like, uh, I prioritize protein in all my meals, but also incorporating healthy fats are super good for, like, brain function, um, and it's just super great in general. It helps you feel full. And for dinner, we like to switch it up a lot. I love meal planning. So I usually meal plan for the week. Um, I need to get back on that though, because I've missed a couple weeks. Um, but I just like, when I'm looking for a recipe, I go on Instagram or like look on people's blogs. I love Olivia Adrian's. She has a lot of good recipes. Rachel's Good Eats and Ambitious Kitchen are my go-tos. They're all just really good. But I would say for like a quick lunch so like to bring to school for example like just meal prep something for the week like you can make a salad with like grilled chicken and like just put it in a container or something or I made um chicken noodle soup the other day so I just like separated the noodles and the broth and everything so that the noodles didn't get soggy and just like something like that that you can like bring on the go like heat it up in a thermos I work now so I need to bring my lunch and like a lot of the times I'll like lentil pasta with um like some meat sauce or something or like white rice with like chicken meatballs something like that like just easy that like has some protein and fiber and like a little bit of everything that's my favorite thing about being homeschooled is that I get to make whatever I want to eat for breakfast and lunch I love stopping in the middle of the day to cook a whole meal for myself it's my favorite thing it's the best. Like, it's so much, like, easier and, like, customizable. And, like, I just eat so much better. And it tastes, like, 100 times better. It's fresh. Like, so good. It's the best. What are processed food-wise? We talked about Poppy. What are some other of your favorite clean snacks and things like that? Okay. So, Siete has a lot of things. Like, they have so many chip swaps. They have tortilla chips. Like potato chips they're salt and vinegar potato chips my mom and i are obsessed like they have so much flavor all of you have to try it then simple meals is good they do have like some organic sunflower oil in some of their products um but it's organic and like it's processed a different way so it's not as bad but i try to avoid like their seed oil ones but like they have cookies and everything emmy's cookies are good um scout organic i love their bars they're like little bars they're like the perfect size um for yogurt like dairy free yogurt i still do dairy free for that um we like siggies or harmless harvest like there are just so many clean options out there i would for almond milk don't get silk um do like malk or something that's a good brand cascadian farms is changing Cascadian Farms is the cereal. Califia Farms is the milk. For cereals, like I've been getting a lot of questions about cereals. I love Seven Sundays. Um, Three Wishes is pretty good, but it has natural flavors. Um, And Lovebird is good. I have not tried that though, but it has really clean ingredients. So just like it doesn't have to be the perfect swap because like those little extras can be kind of expensive, like for snacks and everything. Just like a better option like something that doesn't have food dye or something or like seed oils just do what you can right we love simple meals in our house i they have 
oh my gosh, what are they? They have like basically they're like Cheez Its. I oh, love the Simple Mills Cheez Its. So good. And my sister, who's gluten free, she loves the Three Wishes cereal. And there's another brand, I can't remember what it's called, but she loves both of those. She eats them almost every day. It's her favorite thing. Yeah. The, I love like snacking on cereal, like as a snack. It's so good. So you mentioned how it can be expensive to get certain things and there's been a lot of criticism within the clean living community about the costs associated with healthier alternatives. What are your overall thoughts and just what can we do to make clean living more accessible? Yeah, so I feel like it is often assumed that it's super expensive and everything to like eat healthy because like of these snacks, they're pretty pricey sometimes. But if you just focus on eating whole foods and like it doesn't even have to be like top of the line steak like grass-fed steak or grass-fed ground beef like it can just be plain like ground beef that you get from like target <laughs> it's better than eating like, a processed snack and that really isn't like too expensive compared to like other things like honestly a bag of doritos and like a bag of like siete chips from costco are like the same price so it's really like just those little extras. And if you weigh in, like some people get Starbucks every single day. It's like $7 a day. If you stop doing that, like you can put that money towards groceries. And like $7 a day for coffee is like insane. And I can justify like my bag of like $5 Siete chips. Like that will last me a few days. Right. That definitely makes sense. I've seen so much online about just this overall criticism of like, it's so expensive, yada, yada. And I'm thinking like, it has to balance out somehow. So that makes a ton of sense. Exactly. I love like girl math. Yes, exactly. Who have you learned the most from in the online crunchy clean living community? Okay. Um, so I would say I love like that crunchy mom Kate. She's amazing. She seems like so nice. And like we actually chat sometimes. She's like my favorite. Um, and I think like Flea of City he actually changed his account to Bobby Parrish. He's really good too and like informative. And I feel like he's one of like the OG people who started like focusing on ingredients and stuff. And there are also just like so many like organic Gannett. I think that's like, the, how you pronounce her account name. She has a lot of good resources and everything. And honestly, the spillover, I've learned so much from that podcast. And there are just like so many like little accounts I follow that like are super informative and everything. What or who inspired you to start posting about clean living in your gut health journey? So I was like super excited about the results of like starting eating healthier and focusing on my gut health that I just wanted to share it with everyone because I feel like a lot of people are struggling with this lately. And I think that's a result of like what's in our food and everything. So I just wanted to share this with people in case they were struggling too, because it's super hard if like your stomach hurts every day or like you're living in constant pain. Um, so it's like great to have these resources and everything because I would have like loved to see that when I was going through like my major stomach issues. Do you have anyone specific that really inspired you to start posting or somebody that you've really learned a lot about content creation and just drove you to start sharing online? Um, I don't really know because I would say like, I have always really loved like the idea of like posting videos and stuff and everything. Like when I actually first, fun fact, I don't really tell anyone this. Um, when I first found out I was gluten and dairy free, I created a Pinterest account because I was not allowed to have like social media or anything or like Instagram and everything. But my parents were like, you can have Pinterest. So I started posting like healthy recipes on Pinterest just because like I love like filming in the process of like editing things. My sister and I used to pretend to be YouTubers when we were younger. Like I literally loved the whole vibe. I am the same way. I had Pinterest for a lot longer before I had other social media. And so I'm the exact same way. And it's always just been something that's interests me. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to the beginning, what would be the first step to starting to create content if somebody wanted to start posting? So I would first like have a game plan about like where you're going to post. And obviously like your content will revolve or evolve over time based on like what people like and like what your audience likes. Um, but I would like 
just like pick a niche first. Everyone always says that. So pick like a topic you're going to focus on, like a general idea. Mine would be like health and wellness. And then just post videos and like gather content ideas um, and like look at like who do you like to follow and like maybe make videos like they do and like stuff like that. But always be like original and authentic and be yourself because that's what people want to see. I I love that. I definitely think that we always, always, always hear pick a niche, pick a niche, pick a niche. But it really is like so helpful to kind of really find something to hone in and focus your content on. Mm -hmm. What do you think has contributed the most to your success in growing your online presence and just connecting with your target audience? So I always see videos that are like, um, like by my guide, like I have the social media strategy. Like if you want to go viral, like this is how you do it. And those like kind of bother me a little because I feel like it's 70% luck and like 30% like your delivery, your lighting, your creativity, et cetera. Because I feel like like the Instagram algorithm will push like what it wants to push. Like it's not like, yes, like it helps if you're consistently posting, but I feel like there's really no cheat code and you just have to like post consistently and be authentic, like keep going. Like no matter how many followers you have, act like you have a million people watching you. Are there any specific tools or resources that have really helped you learn about content creation and things that have just helped you on your journey as a creator? Yeah, so I really like, like, if I'm struggling with, like, video ideas, I just, like, scroll on Instagram for a little and see, like, what's working, like, lately, like, what kind of videos or how long the videos are, are there any trends happening? Just, like, kind of be on the lookout for stuff like that. And even, like, if I was, like, in the first few months that I started posting, like, I was struggling, like, to get views and everything. So I would, like, just kind of research that and like or chat gpt it i'd be like how do i get like um like what's trending right now on instagram and like that would kind of help or i looked up like what are the current instagram trends and stuff like that but really i feel like it's a matter of just like being authentic and like creating like unique content yeah and i definitely agree with the like there is so much luck that goes into it it's just like You really just have to do your best and be yourself and see where things go. Mm -hmm. What has it been like to build a community and are you feeling a lot of support from followers and just are you really feeling like you're you have a community and you have people that are there to support you? Yeah, I love it. So I was actually like my so Instagram super glitchy. That's like an annoying thing about Instagram. And a lot of people have been, like, saying that their views have gone down on their Instagram stories and it had happened to mine. So I was, like, saying yesterday that, like, a lot of people ha- have not been seeing my stories and apparently, like, responding to the story. Like, if people say, like, hi in, like, the little box below will help the story views. And, like, it was just so nice because so many people were saying, like, hi, like, I love your content. And I get, like, lots of DMs and everything saying, like, I love your content so much. Like, you've inspired me to start eating healthier. And, like, I just love, like, hearing that, uh, like, feedback and, like, these people's opinions because it's just, like, super special to me. And I'm so thankful, like, to have this community and, like, this, like, outlet and everything. And I just love, like, talking to them and chatting with them. And another cool thing is, like, as you mentioned, I am selling sourdough starters, like, a dehydrated version. And it's so cool to see, like, who orders them because it's so crazy to me that, like, Miss Crunch, that's my sourdough starter's name is in like Illinois, Maryland, Missouri, Iowa, like all kinds of places across the United States. So it's just like, it makes it so like real to me. Like, I feel like when it's on a screen, it's like, just like, it's on a screen. Like I don't really see these people. So like when I'm getting feedback from them and like seeing like where my starters are going, it's like real, which I love. I love that. I definitely think that like the community of it, especially on Instagram, I feel like community is really strong now. And that's one of my favorite parts about having the podcast is just building that community and talking with people and just getting to know each other. How do you find the confidence to express your authentic self online? Because we mentioned how important it is to really be you. Yeah. So I've always like, I don't know, I've like never really struggled with like self like confidence and everything or like stuff like that. I'm very fortunate. But I always just remind myself that like God made me in like his image and likeness. Like, I don't know if this is probably not a religious podcast or anything, but 
like I just like this means like that like my authentic self is like perfect in his eyes and like that's really all that matters and like if someone doesn't like my authentic self or agree with my lifestyle choices like that's okay like they don't have to follow me like they can hate like it's okay like it just like I don't know I've always had like thick skin or like never really cared about what people thought about me so that has been helpful and like it doesn't really bother me and like my absolute favorite quote is why I fit in when you were born to stand out. It's by Dr. Seuss. And I just love it so much because it's so true. Like, I don't want to fit in with the crowd. I want to be a leader and have my own thoughts and opinions. And, like, I posted a reel um, yesterday because I really liked the sound. It, like, said, like, why would I want to be doing, like, what everyone else was doing if I want a different outcome? Which is, like, so true because, like, I don't want to be like everyone else, like, eating the standard American diet and, like, feeling tired all the time or sick all the time. Like, I want to be the healthiest version of myself that I can be. I love that. I I was on a seminar the other night, and one girl said, and this is a very common thing to say, but just, like, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. Like, Mm -hmm. it's – you don't need everyone to enjoy you as long as you're being the best, healthiest version of yourself. That's all that matters. Yes, that's so true. How do you approach collaborating with brands and other creators while still maintaining being yourself and being authentic? Yeah, so I always like if like an opportunity arises and like some like a brand reaches out to me, I always like research the brand first. If it's a brand I haven't tried, like I make sure to let them know and say like I'm not going to post this until I try the product and like know I like it. And, like, I'm not going to post it if I don't like it because I never want to, like, sway my audience, like, into buying something that I don't like. And, like, they are, like, wasting their money because they're not going to like it either or if it doesn't have clean ingredients. Because, like, these people trust me and they trust my opinion. So I always want to make sure that, like, I truly love the product or the creator that I'm promoting. That's so, so important. I am always – I'm the same way with people who come on the podcast. I always – am researching guests because I want to protect, I want to protect my audience. I'm very protective of the people who are listening to the podcast and who follow me. And I want to make sure that I'm giving them the best possible information. Exactly. Like I totally relate. Have you ever experienced burnout and just having a difficult time feeling creative and motivated to post? So I wouldn't say so because, like, I feel like this is, like, truly, like, my passion. Like, I'm so passionate about this and I can talk about stuff like this for hours. But sometimes I struggle with, like, finding ideas of videos and, like, reels to post. So when that happens, like, I try to sit down and, like, brainstorm or, like, just let the thought of, like, I have to post a reel today consume my mind so that I have a million of ideas by, like, the end of the day or the end of my brainstorm session Or I'll just, like, scroll on social media and, like, see what's working, like I said before. And, like, that usually helps, like, get video ideas. I'm the same way. I always am trying to do, like, I call it an intentional scroll. So I'm intentionally, like, looking for inspiration and ideas and things like that. Yes, exactly. So now I want to shift over to talk about homeschool. We're both homeschoolers. So you said you started homeschooling at the beginning of this year? Yes, but I was homeschooled one year after COVID. Like, my mom homeschooled me and all my siblings. And then I went back to school for two years. So what prompted the switch for you? So, yeah, there were several factors and reasons for why I started homeschooling this year. And I don't think I've ever talked about this online before, but a major reason for why I decided to homeschool with this year is that I felt a super strong calling from God to homeschool. Like I went on a trip at the end of the summer to Spain and Portugal with my church. And towards the end of it, I, I just felt like this super strong urge to homeschool or try an alternative form of high school. And I 100% know that this was a God moment, as my grandma would say. She loves that like little phrase. Because like this came out of nowhere. Like it was like the beginning of August. I was going back to school in a couple of weeks. And like I just felt like this strong like need to homeschool. And luckily, when I spoke to my parents about it, like, and did tons of research, we did tons of talking and, like, had lots of conversations, they, like, decided that they were going to allow me to homeschool. And I think one of the reasons, like, that helped was they know, like, the conditions in these, like, public high schools. And, like, I know, like, public school is great for some people. It just was not working for me. Like, 
I didn't feel challenged in my high school and everything. So there were a variety of reasons why I wanted to homeschool. I won't get into all of them, but this was just like a major sign for me that I needed to homeschool. So I did like tons of research and I found like my online school. So I love it. And I'm so glad my parents let me homeschool this year. I definitely relate to just feeling like just public school is not for you. I, I personally was in public school pretty much my entire life up until the last semester of high school. And homeschooling was the decision we made because of traveling and being able to travel full time but I still feel like now even being home like I would never want to go back to public school I feel so much more mentally healthy being at home exactly I 100% relate to that and I feel like yeah like that is like one of the reasons my health has been like has improved since then um because I feel like it's like the environment isn't always great um it's school and it's like stressful and it's tiring And I feel like people weren't meant to sit in classrooms all day. Definitely. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages that you've experienced with homeschooling? Yeah, so I love it. Um, I think there are tons of advantages. So like I get to spend more time with my family. I have more time for working or like going on my or like um, posting on my social media. Um, And there's so much more freedom. Like I have the freedom to make my own schedule. I have the freedom to like do whatever I want. Um, And I feel like I'm learning so much more. Like I'm super challenged in my school and like I'm learning computer skills and motivational skills because I feel like a big part of homeschool is like you make your own schedule. So you have to be like self accountable and like motivated. So I think that's super helpful. And I wouldn't say there are many disadvantages, but I feel like it doesn't work for everyone because like you have to manage your own schedule and deadlines so like that is a lot of people like which is okay aren't great at doing that um and you have to really like stay motivated and consistent and i would say it can get a little repetitive because like you're home like all day basically and you don't get to see your friends as much which like it varies from person to person like how you feel about that Right. Yeah, I definitely think that's the biggest challenge for me is just the social and not being surrounded by people my own age every day. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you have to manage your own time and schedule. What does a typical day look like for you balancing content creation and school and work and all the things? I love questions like this. So I usually wake up around like 630, 7 o'clock and like I go downstairs, do my morning routine and everything. And I usually start school like between 8.30 and 9 o'clock just because like I'm busy doing things in the morning. Um, But depending on the day, I usually finish school with like in one to three hours. Right now it's like about one hour because I'm almost done for the year. Um, In some days, like after I finish my schoolwork, I'll go to the grocery store and film a few reels or something or like edit and film reels at home. Um, because I like to have my reel ready the day before so that all I have to do is write the caption when I want to post it the next day. And I usually post my reels around three, four o'clock. And I also go on stories like during the day, depending on like what I'm doing, I try to post stories like three to, I would say eight stories a day. I, it depends on the day. Cause like, I'll just go on there. Like it's not curated or anything. Um, and at night I, in bed, I like to catch up on emails and partnerships and like check on my affiliate links and stuff. How do you keep everything organized and just, it's a lot, especially when you're young and in high school, how do you keep your time and just everything managed effectively? Yeah, it is a lot. And I always prioritize school, um, because like, unfortunately that's more important than my Instagram at the moment. Um, so I usually do all my school related things. Like that's the first thing I like try to get done and out of the way and then like do my creator things like in the evening and at night. And I also like just got a job, um, and I was working like three days a week, but I had to switch down to two because like, it's just too hard to manage, like, because I am still in school. Um, so like, just because it's homeschool, like it is like a lot of work and a lot of time. Yeah, definitely. It's hard to, like, 
as a teenager who's a homeschooler and a creator and has a job, like it's hard to balance everything and keep everything consistent. Mm -hmm. What are some misconceptions or have you encountered any misconceptions about homeschooling and how do you address them? Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people, as I was just saying, think that homeschool is a real school in that it's like unorganized or that I'm not learning enough. But I feel like that's like the opposite of the truth because I think it's great that I don't have a set schedule because it helps me to manage my time well. And I'm also learning so much more compared to my previous years. And I feel like just a lot of people like probably don't know this, but I'm enrolled in an actual school. It's just online and self-paced. So like it is like real like school and I'm learning a lot. I like have to write tons of essays. I just don't have like tests or anything, but it is real school, like depending like what people think or not. Yeah, I get the same thing. I'm in a similar program. So, and it's just like, you know, people just don't understand when they haven't experienced it themselves. Exactly. What advice would you give to someone who's a new homeschooler or just any students who are considering homeschooling and are unsure where to start? So I would do tons of research because I feel like it's important for everyone just because there are so many options out there. Like everyone's different. Not every program works for every person. So I would just ask around and like once you do a ton of research, just do what feels right for you. Like go with your favorite program or your favorite like school. Um, And even like you can like there are so many programs that like aren't online like you can do um, like they can get books like you can get books and like do it in there. That's what I did after COVID. But if anyone like needs any help or has any questions, they can always DM me. I love helping people with that stuff just because I feel like it can be stressful and overwhelming. I definitely think that it can be so overwhelming because there's so much information out there and it's hard to understand especially because every state is different and there's different laws about homeschooling and things like that too. Mm -hmm. So to finish off, we're going to do homework. We always give something actionable that the listener can do right now to implement what we discuss. So what's one habit that anyone, no matter what their circumstances are, can incorporate into their day-to-day life to live more clean? Yeah. So I would just start by eating more protein Um, like it's super easy because you can just incorporate it into like any meal or any snack because this is just so beneficial because protein is essential for healthy hormones happy gut muscle growth fullness and more it's super important and most people like don't eat nearly enough Um, and it's just one of those things like there's so many great sources of protein that vary like you can have nuts meat um, fish like there's seeds there's so many things Um, so it's super customizable and like pretty achievable amazing well thank you so much if you want to connect with Ava all of her links will be in the episode notes so be sure to follow her and of course the link to her sourdough starters will also be below thank you so much for joining me of course this was so much fun I actually really liked it I'm so excited for you to hear this episode Thank you so much for listening. If you love this podcast and you want to show your support, please leave a rate and review as well as follow me and all of my socials at the Amana Adams or at makingwaves.ma. Be sure to follow this show so you never miss another episode. Don't forget to drink your water and I will talk to you later.